Okay, so today I want to introduce you to the idea of layers. And for me, layers provides me the opportunity to add some depth to my images and also um, gives me the freedom to make some uh, changes that if you just stay on one layer, you can't do. So um, hopefully you'll be able to see most of what I'm doing. The layers uh, buttons are down here and you're automatically given two layers. The first one is the back layer which is already white and then a transparent layer. Whoops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. So if you want to, you can always move layers around which is kind of cool and I'll show you how to do that in a minute um, when you start, or why you'd want to do that in a minute when you um, start working with the layers. One of the things that I like to do sometimes is I want to get rid of this background layer and as you can see then that gives me a grid to work on. And then another thing that I tend to do to help me know where I am on the page, so to speak, is I like to draw some uh, little guidelines. So let me make sure I have a tiny little brush going on here. That is not a tiny little brush. Okay. And mine are not perfect, but it just gives me an idea of where I am. And if I'm really trying to... If I'm doing detailed work and I need to really know where I am, I'll do extra lines. Sometimes I'll even color them so that they're different colors. Now, once I've done that, though, then I need to add a new layer because that's just going to be my background layer that's going to um, go away eventually. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave it back there so that I can use it to guide me, and then um, I'll just get rid of it when I no longer need it. Or sometimes um, I end up needing more layers and I just get rid of that one um, and and or I turn it into a colored background layer and then it's uh, just adds to the image. So now that I have my background layer, let's just uh, let's just work on making a block. So let me change the size of my style and the size of my there, my paintbrush. And I'm just going to do a real simple block. And this allows me then to show you that if I wanted to color this, let's say I wanted to put purple on that front area, and I'm just going to do it super simply and not very well. If I put color in and I accidentally go over the tracing, the line that I've drawn, and I want to get it back, I can't do it because if I do anything, I just erase everything. So let's go backwards and add in a layer. And because I want the color to be behind those lines, I'm going to move my layer um, to the left of the image that I want to color into. Okay, so now I can uh, get my paintbrush nice and big. Whoops. Thought I had the paintbrush, not the oh, let me change it again, sorry. I'm gonna get that different brush. Okay, so let's say I just want to get this front one, but I want to get it, you know, all the way full. So what this allows me to do then is then I can erase right up against the edges if I want to do that. Just to kind of neaten it up. And then um Depending on what I'm trying to do, if it's really important to me that I don't mess with this purple, I can always add in another layer and then put the second color next to it. And one of the things that I found um, to be helpful is that, um, you know, you can, you don't have to think about a single object on a layer. So let's say that, um, you want to add something else in another space on this same layer, then you can very easily do that. I'm just going to make a nice big red ball like this. Okay. And then if I wanted to later, I could add shading with another layer. Um, but as you can see, it's on this layer with the blue, and it's not competing with the blue, it's, uh, but it does allow some depth. Now, again, if I want to add shading, but I don't want to have it right on that top layer 
I can add another uh, layer in, or I could have put that ball further back on the previous layer. Um, let's just get in a little color here. And So um, then I would maybe want to add in the, the black circle, or black edges. To make it, oops, didn't get my black there. Come on. And I can either, I hate that circle. It's not very oval. I mean, not very round. So I can either erase it or I could have done what I did before, which was actually go back to this layer and erase the parts that are outside of that circle. Oops, I didn't do a very good job there. Um, so that it's much. Oop, oh well. And then erase this around the edges. And, you know, you can, I did a really bad job on that, but um, you can do a lot of things and you can choose different uh, shapes of your, your eraser and so on um, so that you get different effects. Like I, I like using that other brush, oops, this one when I'm trying to square things off like I did on the cube. It's not very good as you can see on the edges of the circle. But let's now show you what it looks like when we um, then add some color to that back layer. And I just want something real nice and light so that it just shows the depth. Come on, okay. And then I'm gonna just put it in the back. So you can see all those extra lines are gone. And let's look at the layers. We've got a plain black, a uh, plain blue uh, layer in the very back, and then the colors. Now, if I had put this color on first, the black background color on first, and not use these layers, then everything would be on top of it. And any time I decided that I wanted to erase a tiny little thing, I would actually erase more than that. And I'm not sure what happened. My iPad's been a little funky with, um, with the erase button. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Okay, all right, let's try that again, see if we can, maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. No, I don't know what's going on with that. If anybody has any answers to that, let me know, because that's kind of a pain. Anyway, that gives you kind of an idea of what it looks like to use layers, and, and a very rudimentary um, reason for using them. So if you have questions or want to know more, just let me know.